Well, good morning. I want to thank everybody for coming out, and I want to thank LSU for moving this indoor uh, celebration indoor. It's a uh, <laughs> You know, my secretary said, how in the world are you doing a groundbreaking inside? I said, Let, check the weather outside. We're going to do this. And so I, I want to thank them for moving the dirt inside. Today really is a, a great day for LSU, for Baton Rouge, for Louisiana. And by this enormous crowd, there are so many people that we've got to thank. And I know that there is no way that I can certainly thank everybody that deserves to be thanked. But let me just start by listing a few folks. And I know that King's going to get up here and thank some folks as well. I want to, first of all, start with our legislators. We have got a great delegation, not only here in Baton Rouge, but across the state that supports our investments in LSU and higher education, but in particular here in the Baton Rouge area. In the Senate, we've got Dan Clater. In the House, we've got Steve Carter, who happens to be the chairman of the, the House Education Committee. You've got Franklin Foyle. Those are the three that are here with us today, and I know they've got many of their colleagues that are also strongly supportive of LSU. Let's give these three guys a great round of applause. Now, we've also got, and again, I, I can't begin to thank everybody up here. You've got the Martin family. You've got Art Favre. You've got several companies. You've got Dan Bournet from LCA. You've got several private donors that have made this possible. Uh, I see uh, Robert Bow from Bow Brothers, and I see several folks, friends of LSU, and I hope that King and others will, will mention some of these. There are a couple of leaders that I do want to thank in, in particular. First, I, I want to thank King. He has done a phenomenal job. It seems like uh, he is still new to his job, but he's actually been here a little while. Done a phenomenal job here on the LSU campus, but for the entire LSU system. Let's give King a great round of applause for his leadership. <laughs> he's got a good team around him. Dean Kubek has done a great job here as Dean of the College of Engineering. I also want to thank Lee Griffin, CEO of the LSU Foundation, and you're going to hear um, from some of these. Again, I can't begin to thank all the folks that have made this possible through their private donations, but I've got to thank Phyllis Taylor. We literally would not be here today, not only without her generous financial support, but also her challenge to others, both to the state and to other donors to say, this is really about the future of LSU and the future of Louisiana. The Taylor family has been so generous, either through starting TOPS and in many other ways, supporting LSU and other great charitable causes in our state. Anytime you turn around and there's a good cause, whether it's law enforcement, K through 12 education, higher education, you will see Phyllis Taylor there strongly supporting financially and otherwise great, great causes. Let's give Phyllis a great round of applause. And I know she'd be the first to thank everybody else and mention so many others. I promise this will be the last group I, I thank. Otherwise, it sounds like an Academy Award speech or something. I, I'll be thanking my agents. Um, I do want to thank you. Know, we're here to celebrate groundbreaking on a beautiful building. And that's a very, very important investment in the renovation, I should say, I guess. It, it will be literally, even though we're renovating a building, it will be as if we were building a brand new building when we're done. But this is not just about bricks and mortar. It's not just about facilities. The most important thing we're here to celebrate today are the people that are going to use these facilities. It's the faculty, it's the staff, and it's the students. Now, we're going to talk a lot, and you're going to see pictures of this beautiful lab and teaching facilities. But the reality is what really makes today so special is the great work that our faculty, our staff, and our students are doing. Literally, this is the future of our state. And I'm going to show all kinds of numbers about our economy, but it really is about the people that are going to be training and educating and doing great research in these facilities. Let's give the faculty, staff, and students a great round of applause here at the Ellison College of Engineering. You know, it is great to be here on this groundbreaking. Since we've taken office, we've invested over $700 million in higher education infrastructure. That includes more than $150 million in LSU and the Baton Rouge research area. We have made a commitment to improve our campuses and our learning environment for our students. We know that our higher education system is a critical pipeline for ensuring that we have a skilled workforce in Louisiana. A strong workforce is what's going to help us to continue to grow our economy. And I've said this before, but it bears repeating. I'm proud that we did ethics reforms. I'm proud that we cut our taxes. I'm proud that we have reinvented our workforce training programs. Today, Louisiana does have lower taxes, a stronger ethics program, better workforce training programs. And those are good. But I think the states, the countries that are going to win in today's economy are those states and those countries that literally have the best educated, most skilled, most productive people. 70% of the companies who want to move here or expand here 
tell us one of their top two concerns is finding skilled workers. And that's why it is so important as we continue to compete in this economy that we make investments like today's. For more than six years, our economy has continued to skyrocket. Since 2008, we've announced over economic development wins totaling over 83,000 new jobs, $54 billion in capital investment. Today, we've got higher exports, higher GDP, higher incomes than we have ever had before. Today, in Louisiana, more people are working than ever before because of all of the businesses investing in our state. All across Louisiana, we continue to see evidence of how our attractive business clim climate and our talented workforce are creating opportunities like we have never seen before in our state. These are signs of incredible progress. After 25 years of out-migration, we've got over six years of in-migration as people are moving back into our state. But we cannot become complacent if we truly want to make Louisiana the best place in the world to raise a family and to find a job, we've still got more work to do. And that's why we need to build on our progress and make sure that Louisiana remains competitive and attractive to companies looking to invest and create jobs. That's in part why we increased higher education funding by more than $140 million this past year. $40 million of that is for the new WISE Fund, which will help us train more of our students here today for jobs of the future. LSU, for example, estimates that WISE funding coming to their campus, their system, will result in 180 new engineering graduates annually by 2020. 14 of the 26 new hires funded through this year's, this year's WISE allocation will be in the College of Engineering. LSU intends to add a total of 150 new faculty members through 2020, with 50 of those new hires alone at the College of Engineering to help educate our students. A key part of building our workforce is ensuring that our students are trained with world-class skills for these jobs. Now we all know, and I, I told folks, I'm gonna say this, and I believe this, we all know that LSU is a world-class destination for athletics. And we know that every Saturday in the fall, we wanna be number one on the football field. But we must place that same intensity, that same focus on the academic side of LSU as well. We all wanna be number one in sports, we also wanna be number one in academics. We want LSU to be number one in both. Today's announcement is about continuing our mission to help LSU reach its full potential. And that's why we're so proud to be here to break ground on this complex. Upon completion, this new facility will be one of the largest freestanding engineering buildings in the country. With the renovation of Taylor Hall, as well as the addition of a new annex dedicated to chemical engineering, the total amount of first class academic space for the LSU College of Engineering will now grow to more than 460,000 square feet at an increase of more than 100%. The new and renovated engineering complex will include expanded labs for teaching and research, student space, and an academic support center. And you know, when I was thanking all those folks, and I see others out here, I see the Turner family, I see Roland Toops as well with Robert, I see, uh, we got Ron Cambrays here, up here, we've got Rolf McCollish, we got so many folks, and the reason I wanted to thank all those folks is I wanna remind folks how we actually got here. You may remember in 2012, we announced my administration's commitment. We said we would match private donors dollar for dollar, and we challenged them to raise $50 million to help build and renovate this beautiful new complex. We were both uh, amazed and thrilled that LSU not only met that goal, but the donors helped them to surpass that goal three months ahead of schedule. To date, the project has received $55 million in private donations the most successful fundraising effort in LSU fundraising history, not only in terms of dollars, but how quickly they raised those dollars. As a result, we kept our word. I told them if they'd raised 50 million, I would put up 50 million. The state would put up 50 million. They raised 55. The state's putting up $55 million in capital outlay. This comp. This complex will be completed by 2017. Now, I told you up, up front this was about more than bricks and mortars. This is about students, about faculty and staff. Every student here and all the faculty and staff have incredibly interesting and important stories to share. I can't share every story, but I do want to share one with you. I want to introduce to you Hugo Shalom. Hugo arrived in America from Venezuela. When he arrived, he, he spoke some English, but not as well as he needed to. Today, Hugo is a sophomore in the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering. He focuses on the field of robotics, in large part due to his father. His father is an electrical engineer. He started a robotics program at Hugo's high school and encouraged him to get involved. 
This experience inspired and motivated him to pursue a degree in mechanical engineering here at LSU and to inspire others in the same way. But just a few years later, not only does he speak fluent English, he has his tuition paid in full through the Exxon Mobil Diversity Scholarship. Now listen to this. Now engineering is a pretty tough curriculum. Maintains a 3.88 GPA. He is quickly becoming an expert in robotics, and as we were visiting before, he tells me he also takes time out of this hectic schedule to give back to younger students as a College of Engineering peer mentor to inspire others the same way his dad inspired him. He leads students through the LSU College of Engineering peer mentors program, where he is the robotics leader. He trains incoming mentors who will help high school and middle school students with their academics. Not only is he getting a great education here, He's also helping to fill that pipeline, the next generation, to help excite younger kids about science, engineering, and robotics, hopefully motivating them one day to study engineering here at LSU, and hopefully those students will come and enjoy this new complex. Now, Hugo's here with us today. Hugo, come up here. Let's give Hugo a great round of applause. It gets cold in Venezuela or not, but I can't imagine he's wearing a t-shirt given how cold it is out there. <laughs> but that's just one, Hugo is just one example of the great minds that are being nurtured, challenged, and taught right here on the LSU campus, right here in the College of Engineering. This complex will help us to train more students like Hugo, continue to move our economy forward, making sure our workforce continues to grow. The LSU College of Engineering currently graduates roughly 650 bachelor's graduates per year ranking in the top 10% in the entire country for graduates. Now here's something that really amazes me. They have experienced a 50% increase in undergraduate enrollment in five years, making the LSU College of Engineering the fifth fastest growing college in the country. I wanna stop here just for a second. We had a, an economic development announcement a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, right here in Baton Rouge. We had a high tech firm come to creating IT jobs, software jobs, in Baton Rouge. And that's for the first time the dean actually came forward and made that public announcement. He goes, yeah, now it's official. In the last five years, they've increased 50% increase in undergraduate enrollment. I think you're seeing an even faster increase within the specific areas in software and computer uh, engineering as well. Almost a doubling uh, of students in just the last few years. I want you to think about that. LSU's College of Engineering, they've looked around, they've seen the demand for their graduates, they've seen the growth in the economy. When was the last time we heard about higher education moving that quickly to help their students, to help the economy, to help the needs of our employers? And what's great is we were talking about, it's great they're growing their, their program, but we know that every one of those students will have a chance to get a great paying job. And what's even greater is unlike in previous years, chances are pretty good they'll have a chance to get a great paying job right here in Louisiana instead of us having to export all those graduates to Dallas, to Texas, to other states for them to pursue their dreams. But I was just amazed when they made that announcement that just in five short years, they've so dramatically grown their enrollment, again, in response to the needs of their students, the economy, and they know those students will have a great future. I think we need to give the dean and all the faculty and staff a great round of applause for doing that. So that 50% increase now makes them the fifth fastest growing college in the country. They're the largest degree granting engineering program in our state, accounting for half of the all engineering and construction management graduates in our state. If you look at the estimates by the Workforce Commission, the Board of Regents, they suggest we'll need to increase the number of our engineering and construction management graduates statewide by at least 30% per year. 330 more graduates per year statewide across all institutions just to meet current demand. But those numbers don't tell the full story. You look at the real drivers, the new drivers in demand for LSU's engineering graduates. Early estimates by LED estimates expected demand over the next decade of at least 5,130 new Louisiana engineers and professionals, such as surveyors and architects. Then you combine that with the need to replace engineers due to retirement and attrition. Over the next 10 years, we'll actually need 12,730 new highly skilled professionals. But even that doesn't tell the full story. You look at our software and digital media sector, it's taking off. Companies like EA, Gameloft, Pixamundo, GE Capital, CenturyLink, and others are adding hundreds of computer science graduates to their ranks over the next few years. 
Beyond the planned infrastructure investments and state-of-the-art facilities, the College of Engineering recently created a new school of electrical engineering and computer science in order to create greater synergy between these two complementary academic areas. This reflects the significant growth expected in the software development, digital media, digital and social gaming technology sectors in Louisiana. On top of that, LED expects that we're going to see growth in durable goods manufacturing as more companies place manufacturing investments in our country again. With all the economic development announcements we made over the last few years, as well as the more significant announcements on the way, we expect LSU's engineering school will need to increase its annual production of graduates by hundreds of graduates per year over the next few years. And that's why today's announcement, today's groundbreaking, today's investment is so critical for the future of LSU and our state. These are great jobs. This expansion is going to enable LSU to help create a lot more of them in our state over the coming years. Today really is a win-win for our students, for our faculty, for our economy. This new engineering complex will create a state-of-the-art learning environment to train the engineers of tomorrow, giving them the skills they need to find job opportunities right here in Louisiana, which will help us to grow our economy. When we made this announcement originally, I shared with you that I'm married to a chemical engineer. I'm the son of a civil engineer. My father-in-law is a chemical engineer. My wife's uncle is an electrical engineer. I'm surrounded, my, my mom studied nuclear engineering here at, at LSU as well. So I'm surrounded by engineers at home. I, was, I guess I'm the disappointment of the family, so we had to go do something else. <laughs> I can tell you firsthand how important it is for the future growth of our state. Today is truly a great day for LSU, for Louisiana, not only for our students and faculty, but really today is another step forward in growing our economy. Congratulations to everybody that made this possible. Please help me give a great LSU welcome to King Alexander, the president of LSU. Thank you, Governor, for all you've done, and thank you all the donors in the room. This has really been a team effort. And it's both individual donors, but also it's been many of our corporate sponsors who rely very heavily on our graduates. Over 527 donors have donated to this project to get us to the $55 million that we needed to raise within about a year period of time. Over 23 of those gave over a million dollars themselves, individually. So as you can see, this has not only been the largest project, fundraising project that we've had. It's the largest academic facility we've ever built on our campus. It's the largest in the state of Louisiana. This would not be possible without the support of Governor General from the very beginning by putting $50 million on the table and challenging us in a public-private partnership to do the exact same thing. And I'll share with you one phone call we made when we had broken the $50 million mark. Ms. Taylor and I called the governor on a conference call and quickly asked, said, well, we've got to the 50. What if we get to 55? And he, without a hesitation, said, I'll match it with $55 million. So, Governor, thank you for being such a leader in this and making sure that this new facility becomes a part of LSU for years and decades to come. <laughs> I'd also like to thank our legislators' body, our legislative leaders who stood behind us. This became one of the heart, the, the foundational pieces of the WISE Act. When we could tell them that we've raised the money for a new facility and the state has helped us build a new facility, when we could tell them that student demand is up 35% from where it was in the past, student demand that 15 years ago we were struggling to get students into engineering, struggling to get students into math and science, and we are thrilled that our students have stepped to the plate and our students are moving into these areas, and we're just trying to keep up with you, and I'm so glad to see so many of our students here today joining us on this important event. But our legislators stepped to the plate also. We said, we need 50 new faculty in this area if we're going to get from 650 graduates a year to 950. And you know, they voted 100 to nothing in the assembly in favor of the WISE Fund to put new faculty into these classrooms to meet the student demand that's here that will also be able to address the, all the variety of areas, new laboratories, and the new facilities that will once again become a major anchor for LSU on this side of campus. We've been an engineering school for, since the beginning. We're an A&M. It is in our DNA. And not only are we the fifth fastest growing in engineering graduates, but we're the 18th largest in the United States. We've moved up 10 notches just in the last five years, which means I'd like to thank our faculty and staff for tackling these important challenges that face Louisiana, this region, and the country, but also meeting the student demands that are all around us as we walk around this facility today. More importantly, I'd like to thank of all the donors 
We had individual, as I mentioned, donors, which is a little different than our College of Business building, which was primarily individual donors that gave a lot of money to support the new College of Business. This was a combination, the first time ever that we've had so many individual don donors join corporations, Mobile, Shell, so many, Turner Industries, all of them came forward and put 65% of this money on the table to support our students, to support our graduates, and to support what we're attempting to do here at LSU is become one of the nation's best, if not the best, College of Engineering in the United States. I'll point out one other thing about the students. 14 of this nation's 15 best paying starting salaries upon graduation, 14 of the 15 top paying salaries, starting salaries, are engineering or computer science based. So our students have chosen wisely. Now with the help of our faculty and staff, they'll be moving into these great fields of study. 90% of our graduates in engineering find a job within six months in their field of study. 70% of those stay right here in Louisiana. So these students are not only here, but they're gonna become an important part of our fabric in building the economy of Louisiana and building the economy of this region. I'd also like to thank our donors and our committee, that Harry Longwell and Ms. Taylor, that spearheaded over and over again. This was really a daunting challenge in a year to do something we've never done before as a university. It's even a more daunting challenge to know what's going on in other states because we really appreciate what the governor and what our legislative bodies have done to make this happen because in California, they haven't seen a capital project since 2008. And I remember when I was at the University of Illinois, they basically passed a moratorium that no new buildings were gonna be built with state money in the state of Illinois. This was over 15 years ago. So the fact that we're still investing and we're investing in the next generation of graduates and we're doing it with our governor, our state legislators, state legislators, Harry and Ms. Taylor and all the great committee members that stand behind me today, know that their commitment to you is vested in this facility. Their commitment to you is vested in the new faculty that we're hiring. Their commitment to getting you to walk across the stage with a highly valued degree that you can take anywhere in the world, but we want you to stay here, matters. And it matters to everybody behind me and it matters to all the donors, the 527 donors that gave to this great facility. So this is a great day for LSU. It's a great day for the state of Louisiana, but more importantly, when I talk about graduating 950 engineers a year and computer scientists, remember this nation only graduates 90,000. So the role this university plays has never been more significant when it comes to engineering, science, mathematics, technology, and computer science. So what you're doing is reshaping not just this region, but reshaping what we expect to see more engineers in our economy nationwide and internationally. So thank you all for being a part of this. This truly has been a team effort and a family effort. And at this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Phyllis Taylor to please come to the podium for a few remarks. This would not have been possible without Ms. Taylor and all her efforts. Ms. Taylor. Many thank yous have been said, certainly all well deserved. First of all, the governor, for creating an innovative trend that you are going to see happen, certainly within our state, but probably nationwide. A collaboration between public and private funds to address the needs of the nation, the needs of our state, the needs of our university. Thank you for this innovation. And then this great team that stands behind me that has worked so hard on this project. They've already been thanked. I want to single out one person in particular, my co-chairman, who was really the chairman of this committee, Harry Longwell. He is the consummate LSU engineer, a graduate of LSU. He's worked on fundraising for this university tirelessly and stepped up to the plate again this time giving of his own funds as well as contacting many of his colleagues in the oil and gas industry to make this possible. So let's please recognize Harry Long. And then there is, there is one group that has not yet been recognized despite all of the thank yous that you have heard today. And that is each and every one of you in the audience. Stop for a moment and think. That $50 million of public funds came from somewhere. It came from each and every one of you as taxpayers. So thank you for making this possible.
It is for me an extremely proud day, a time when because of my good fortune, because of the success of my husband, we were able to look and be part of the philanthropic part of this project. I am particularly proud because this building, which will bear Patrick's name, is a great legacy, a legacy for, as I said earlier this morning, three things he cared about greatly, LSU, education, and engineering. Thank you all. Thank you. In the halls of Patrick F. Taylor, mementos remain from the benefactors who dedicated their time and resources to bring what was then known as the SEBA building to fruition. Many of those names we no longer recognize from companies that were sold or acquired to donors who were departed, but their impact remains true today. They were the innovators that launched three decades of achievement, learning, and success in this very building. And today I'm surrounded by a new generation of benefactors who have an even greater vision for the possibilities, not only for this building, but for LSU, our state, and our nation. These leaders have made a commitment to this project unsure initially when this particular day would come about. But our journey actually started about nine years ago when Mr. Ron Cambry agreed to chair a fundraising team for the Chemical Engineering Building and provided the first major gift of significance. Challenged with a shifting economy, three seemingly separate opportunities arose which ultimately charted the course of the present campaign that we're celebrating today. First was the approval to combine the Chemical Engineering Building Project with the renovation of Patrick F. Taylor Hall. Second was the gracious commitment of Governor Jindal and the legislature to match $50 million if we would raise $50 million. And then third was Mrs. Taylor's remarkable commitment of $15 million to support us in honoring her late husband. Now this accelerated our momentum and led to a fervent validity to our cause. Armed with this tremendous impetus, just two years ago, the people standing here with me today accepted our call to create a campaign steering committee for Patrick F. Taylor Hall in chemical engineering. And as you heard, co-chaired by Mrs. Taylor and Mr. Longwell, this group behind me did the yeoman's work in securing the additional funds, all in nine short months. I would be remiss as well to not recognize the hard work of Mr. Harry Longwell, and thank you, Harry, for your constant encouragement to challenge us all to our limits. I'd also like to thank to the LSU administration. Bill Jenkins and the interim president kicked off the project during his time, but immediately after his arrival, President Alexander, along with Provost Bell, displayed an unfailing commitment, provided a strong leadership necessary at the university to level to make this project a reality. And last but not least, I would like to recognize all the donors as well who helped make this possible. In fact, if you could, would you please stand in the audience so we can acknowledge you, those that contributed to the program. Please stand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, those standing are the leaders, the visionaries, and believers in our future. Combined, as you heard, they contributed the $55 million to renovate Patrick F. Taylor Hall and build a new chemical engineering building. They are those that believed that we could raise this lofty goal when, I must tell you, not everybody had that same faith that we could do it, and certainly not in nine months. But we did it because we're standing here today. In a few minutes, we're going to turn that dirt to symbolize the success of this campaign. So on behalf of the entire university, its faculty, its staff, its students, and our future, thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce my partner, Mr. Lee Griffin from the LSU Foundation. First of all, uh, after the events of this past weekend, I apologize for my red tie. <laughs> I do bleed purple and gold. And uh, Governor, we want to thank you for the challenge that you presented to us. And every time we met as a group, we said we're not going to let our governor down. He stood up for us. We're going to make this work. We also committed ourselves that we would not fail this university. We would not fail 
this college, we would not fail the students and the faculty and the staff of this college. I think this campaign has catapulted the philanthropy for uh, alums throughout uh, this country. And we look for much better things to come as a result of it. This was a team effort. And to, to do something like this as quick as we did, and by the way, I talked to a lot of university foundation people over the country and told them what we were about to do and they laughed at us. They said, you're setting yourself up for failure. Well, I have since called them back <laughs> and let them know what we did. But to do this, it's not, it's, it's not one person, it's not one group, it's the total. And the total has to start with wonderful leadership that we had from Harry and Phyllis. And uh, they were outstanding. I take my hat off to both of you. Uh, Harry, uh, if you want to get something done, give it to Harry and, and Phyllis, and it's going to get done. So it was, it was the right leadership. Uh, it was the right dean. Uh, Rick knows and has the confidence of his alums and friends here at LSU. You have to have the faculty and staff that people trust. When somebody reaches in their pocket and gives you a million dollars, they have to know they can trust you to get that job done. That's what we have in our dean and in our faculty and chairs and the like. Then it takes volunteers, and you see several of them standing around here and out. I'm going to knock that thing over now, but out there in the audience. And uh, we had a great volunteer uh, team. Then it takes development officers that pound the pavement, that get out there to get the job done. And they did a wonderful, wonderful job. And the foundation has to be there to support the effort. We made this our number one goal. We committed to this campaign our number one development executive. And with all of those people come the wonderful donors that uh, arrived and made this possible. So that's it. The bottom line, of course, is our, our donors. Uh, by the grace of God, I came down to LSU in 1960 on a graduate assistantship and have been closely associated with LSU uh, ever since. And I can tell you that I have never seen LSU primed to, for greatness the way I see it today. The moon and the stars are all there. We have great leadership. Uh, we have a governor that's supporting us and a legislature that's coming behind us. We have great representatives uh, that care about LSU and make sure to get the job done. So we are uh, not nearly as great of a university as we are going to be in the next few years. Thanks to you.